Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to your podcast. Um, as I said, my name is Ariel. Um, in my background, I'm a chemist. I made uh, my PhD in artificial intelligence, but long before it was so popular in 94. I was one of the pioneering in the field. Um, I worked 14 years in a big company, in a big corporate. Then I have decided that I want to build my own business. And uh, in 2000, I started my first startup. We built uh, three startups in this organization. Uh, took the company public in the NASDAQ. I was several years CEO uh, of the company in the NASDAQ as a public company. We made IPO, we made secondary round, and the company at the end sold and is part of the pond today. Uh, and now uh, this is my fifth startup that uh, I am involved, and I will be happy to tell you a little bit about, more about my own. Yes, for sure. I'm, I'm very curious about, you know, what you're doing now. Uh, so with this, this new company you are developing, what are you doing with it? It's also about technology? You know, it always is about the technology, but I think now is the time uh, to cross the pillars and connecting dots. You know, if you're looking still in the universities, you can see, you know, that they are structured on the same that they structure, I don't know, 50, 60 or 70 years ago. You have biology department, you have uh, engineering department, you have, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, other departments, dietitian departments, etc. And the technology moved ahead. So, uh, you, you know, you cannot focus only on single pillar. You need to look around and how you can actually cooperate with other technologies that are not necessarily on the same field. So what we we doing is actually integrating the technologies rather than focus on single technology. And uh, and therefore the product is different. Our product is and well, what we are trying to aim is to mitigate or remove the risk for having diseases, which means predict them behind the horizon and using the nutritional vehicle in order to eliminate or mitigate the risk of the disease. But in order to do that, our focus is in integrating technology rather than developing a single. So we have AI and machine learning and big data and, and nutrition and biochemistry and clinical trials and uh, medical devices. So it's more integration rather than single business. Well, that's the, that sounds wonderful. So that means that the work of your new startup is fully dedicated to prevention in health. Yes, and uh, this is a long story because, you know, the healthcare industry is maybe the only industry that really didn't change. You know, it's called health. And health is a great name. But if you're asking what the business of healthcare is doing, is managing diseases. It's not health. That's true. That's true. This is the real business, you know. That's a good uh, question, yes. Uh, and so it's nothing with health. It's, it's managing diseases. And then it's, of course, a mutual interest for everyone. When one is sick, he wants that the healthcare will manage him well, and the drug industry wants that you will live longer. And the doctors want to see you many visits they can and the hospital. So it's a, it's a nice business and it's growing and you live longer and you are able to cope, but it's actually improving the performance of the business. And in prevention, there is no money. Um, and therefore, you know, this is the only industry that was not changed. It's still a business of proactive. <clears throat> it's business reactive rather than proactive. This is the business. Right. Um, and and I think that today, with the technologies and the new technologies that gave us new glasses, you know, we actually are able to predict disease long before they they arise. And if you ask what impact they have, there are only three factors: is you know your genetic, your lifestyle, and the nutrition. Genetic is not relevant because at the moment that you're born, you got your car, so it's not replaceable. Mm -hmm. So the lifestyle and the nutrition, and nutrition should be very effective 
when you know well in advance and they are much less effective when the disease occurs. So right. That's 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 really amazing. I I've, I've been wondering always, you know, uh, why there is so much research on disease and so little research on healthy people. There is an abundant amount of healthy people on the planet that stay healthy for so long and have so many skills and abilities, but those uh, healthy habits, the healthy skills, the healthy abilities, the healthy qualities are not being researched fully. I mean, I, I don't see much of that research. And as you say, you know, uh, health is a study of disease, actually. I am really glad for, for the work you're doing. It, it sounds like a change of perspective, you know, and it, it, it looks very promising, I think. I would say it may be change of perspective and maybe you define it going back to the roots because mm -hmm. if you ask yourself how the healthcare industry was developed, initially it was yeah. developed based on wisdom of crowd. All the Chinese medicine was wisdom of crowds, you know, 100 years ago. Yeah. The problem with the wisdom of crowd is that you have variation and you have noises and you cannot control the noises. But, you know, with big data, you can control the noises. So actually, it's going back to the wisdom of crowd because the AI allow you to use the wisdom of crowd in order to have very precisely. And yeah. what happened in the meantime was that after the Second World War, said, okay, because the noises is not good enough system and let's do double blind placebo control, but they very, very narrow what they are doing and have limited with the variation. So I don't think it's it's a new concept. It's going back, using the new tools to go back to the old concept of if you have enough data, you precisely know what is going. Exactly, I understand what you're meaning. But it's really wonderful. I really like it very much. I really wish you great success. So considering the type of work that you're doing right now, what would you say today? What is your purpose as an entrepreneur? You know, you know, my my personal ambition is to change the healthcare because there are some changes in the healthcare that the world needs to change the healthcare. And I, I will tell you what are the factors that will force to have change in the healthcare. The first one is that you know all the drugs are new organic entities, and as a human being, we have a lot of variation. But in the past, when you had a side effect, it was hidden. But now when you have a side effect, the first thing that you're doing, going to the Google and seeing who else got the fact effect. And this, you know, in the secondary line, actually shut down the FDA and all the authorities to approve new drugs. Because, the, you know, most of the people that are working in this organization are very conservative. They are not ventures guys. And they have nothing to win rather than to lose. They ask you more talks and more safe and more talks and more safe, which is endless and it becomes very, very expensive. So it's very, very hard to get approval. If you're looking on the drug development, they are today focusing on cancer, where it's highly hard to associate it with your condition because anyway, all orphan drugs, the mainstream almost disappeared. So it's very hard to bring. The second one, we're living now longer, which means we're living, you know, in the past we used to live until 60, now 80. People until 60, okay. most of the time, are not six, until 80, most of the time, we see they are at certain point six. So the healthcare costs become non-affordable to every government. And what they're doing is privatizing, but privatizing is moving from the professional guys to the financial guys. This is the meaning. Right. And therefore, there is no way, no way to continue to with the expenditure of the healthcare cost in the world. And the last thing that really impact is that we are now a small village. We are not any one world. And right. people, I don't know, in India or in Africa, see how people living in New York before they have a house. They have mobile and they know how they're living. So most of the politician and the politician change, you know, with the digital, 
they want to bring health care to everyone. Uh, in India, you know, Modi said that he wants to bring Modi care to 1.4 billion people in one day. And it's impossible. So if you're thinking about the big changes that are happening now in the healthcare, inability to approve new drugs, the high cost, and the need to supply healthcare to everyone, the mm -hmm. only solution would be focusing on prevention rather than treatment. Yes. There That's is right. no other solution, very simple equation. And what happened today that artificial intelligence allow you to work with big data and the knowledge in the nutrition to do prevention much more substantial. Well, from, from one side, I see a challenge that comes in the future, but at the same time, this challenge gives us the, the opportunity to say, today, the only path to go is prevention because any other path, it's just not gonna make it. You know, we claim to have some goals, but then to really achieve them, we need to really go through the path of prevention. That's what is feasible. And it is great that you're, you're pointing this out. Um, 